This is the Skyrover X1. It is a 250 gram drone with a 48 megapixel sensor, and it is very similar to the DJI Mini 4 Pro. I believe it is licensed technology as we saw from a number of different drones. And today I'm going to address a lot of the concerns and things that I've seen while having this drone for the last month or so. Right off the bat, this may give you some PTSD. We've seen a lot of different, very close clones recently, whether or not that be the Spectre Air or the Anzu Robotics Raptor drones. However, this drone is probably the most different of the clones. It still fundamentally does have a lot of similarities with DJI. However, there also are some major differences and this does have some different hardware. You are making different decisions by buying this drone now, and I'll touch on those as well in this video. So I think for the sake of buyers, we should also talk about what those differences are specifically. While yes, the colors and the outside enclosure and case is different, there are a number of spots on this drone compared to the DJI Mini 4 Pro, where the sensor housing, especially for the optical avoidance is different, the outward venting fans, the top case and shell is different. We can ignore the color. The color is also different. The camera cover is also different as well as the camera system itself it does not allow ND filters or any type of wide angle lens attachments. So you're basically just stuck with the actual sensor itself. That also means that unlike the DJI Mini 4 Pro that has that replaceable external cover, you are basically stuck with whatever. So you cannot add any type of polarizing filter, UV filter to kind of cover and protect the lens. Also compared to what we saw with the Spectre Air versus the Air 3, um, this drone specifically also appears to have a different IR sensor on the bottom, as well as not having an LED light as well, which means that you are actually fundamentally getting different hardware. In addition, there is no onboard storage, which if you remember correctly, I believe the DJI Mini 4 Pro has at least eight gigabytes of onboard flash storage. This does not. So if you do not have an SD card in this, you are not going to be able to fly it. They are minor differences though. Everything else, at least in terms of the camera still being a one over one thirds inch sensor, the 48 megapixels, the 4K video, even the app, while it's substantially different, does of course have a lot of similarities and when it comes to the main interface when flying it is of course very similar as well especially with the lack of the led sensor on the bottom that is a substantial difference however when it comes to the software itself especially when flying it you still get the ability to preview out of the obstacle avoidance sensors so when you start moving backward you still get that behavior and i think that really covers and encompasses really all of the major differences at least that this drone has, it is still similar, but it also is different. Also, this drone does support waypoint map, which means that you can use your drag and drop KMZ files that you would get from creating a waypoint mission plan, and you can load onto this drone to fly an automated mission. This might be a useful option if you are looking for something that is not a Chinese made drone. You cannot use a DJI for whatever application you are using. Um, so you can use this drone, automate the missions. Waypoint Map works on all the DJI drones, at least the modern ones with the Waypoint Map feature. So like the Mavics, Mavic 3, Mavic 4, Air 3S, the Mini 4 Pro. So all those drones, this also supports it. So a lot of my next concerns were voiced after we saw what we saw with the Spectre drones in that we had this company come through, make a very similar product to a DJI drone, basically sell them, lock the firmware on the batteries so you couldn't get batteries or use DJI batteries. And then also you were unable to then after the company, I don't know if they've gone out of business, but you no longer can buy any of their products. Basically those people that purchase those drones are up a creek. Keep in mind that these batteries will not fit the DJI Mini 4 Pro. They are not, they physically cannot fit, let alone actually to a firmware level. I haven't been able to test that and I don't feel like sticking wires in between different parts to check. However, fundamentally the enclosure is different and it prevents you from putting the battery in there. So since this drone is locked with an account, that means that you have to log in with an account in order to fly this drone. 
I have a couple questions. Um, some of them are questions that have come up with other drone companies that have chosen to do this and then gone out of business. So this is just a standard set of questions that I kind of ask every drone company, specifically the ones that kind of produce these higher end drones that lock it behind a login screen. So the first one, of course, I'm gonna ask these questions to the company, I'll read you their response. But the first couple questions is one, what does that process look like? How reliable, how secure is this company? Is this company gonna be going out of business in a couple months? Number two, what is the return warranty process like since this is not an established company? Three, is there anything similar to DJI Care, similar to what DJI does, which allows flyaway coverage, easier, cheaper repairs? And lastly, so in terms of addressing warranty, there is a 30 day return or replacement window from the day of delivery. The product comes with a one year warranty within the first year. The brand offers free repair service for any product issues beyond the one year period. Paid repair service is available if user needs support repair. They can contact customer service on the Amazon store who can provide them step-by-step -step assistance. There, while there isn't a program exactly like DJI Care at the moment, our team is exploring more after sales options as they grow. So keep in mind you are also now, by choosing to buy this drone, you are no longer getting the ability to have something like DJI Care or some of the cheaper replacement options, especially flyaway coverage. Brand reliability, so when I was concerned about this, while they understand your concerns about new brands, the company currently has several million USD in reserve funding and multiple drone products that are already in the pipeline for upcoming releases. The team is committed to long-term development in the US drone market. More specific details fall under confidential business planning, but I hope this gives some reassurance. Now, finally, that gets me to this drone itself. When it comes to the camera and sensor, it is exactly like what you would expect on a DJI drone, like the DJI Mini 4 Pro. It has the ability to shoot that 4K 60. You have the 4K 100 FPS video option. You have HDR option, just like you would on DJI drones. It flies identical to a DJI drone itself. The camera puts out images on par with all of the other drones at this level. In addition, the RC itself is also very well designed. I actually personally like this design a little bit more than some of the other non-screen variants out there, specifically the DJI RC N1. This is having all the buttons relatively within thumb's reach does not mean you have to move your fingers outside, but keeps them all inside as well. The controller itself actually I feel like is a little smaller in your hands and also fits a little nicely and maybe even more ergonomic. It is, again, similar to all the other styles with a direct wired connection in. And also there is not an additional option. You either get the ability to buy this kit as a drone and the RC itself, or the drone as well as the fly more package, which gives you that 30 minute flight time on each of the batteries. The parallel charger has the ability to charge all three batteries individually at a time and also does not have an external USB-A port, so you cannot plug the remote in directly, but you can still basically get the same functionality as you would expect by pushing the power button and being able to check the charge of all the different batteries on this drone. This drone's obstacle avoidance works as expected. The drone itself has some differences compared to other ones that allow for these obstacle avoidance sensors to kind of stick out a little bit more and has less kind of covering them. But even with those changes to the physical shell of this drone compared to something else, it does also allow this drone to detect obstacles. It is of course daylight only, but it does work really well. Also, you do not gain any propeller guards. You only get the camera cover itself. The camera cover is unique, so it is something specific to this drone. Um, it, there is some slight differences with how this is on the front. So you expect to have to have this specific propeller guard or specific camera guard and the propellers themselves just flop around. I really wish they would have done something where they have a cover that's provided like DJI does for their Mini 4 Pro. So also this drone itself is going to be launching with the drone and the RC as well as one battery for about $608 and they're going to retail it for about 758. And then for the, and then for the fly more package with the three batteries, the RC and basically everything that you've seen here, that is going to launch price at $718 and the recommended retail price or the normal price is going to be $898. Keep in mind on DJI's website, the DJI Mini 4 Pro is currently out of stock in the United States and the RC and just the drone currently sells for $759 if you can get one. 
So the that is basically the same recommended retail price as what they're offering. I don't know how long the promotional value will stick around, but $150 roughly less than what DJI is selling this drone is something to consider. There is a lot of concerns I would have though, but you still can get that. And then when it comes to the fly more package, they do not offer an ability with to just get the remote itself. You have to get the DJI RC2, which is the one with the screen. So this kind of situation and setup here is not something that you have a direct comparison to. When it comes to considering whether or not you should buy this drone, there are some geopolitical concerns, whether or not you should get the DJI drone if you can get one. Will DJI continue to support drones in the US? There is also a number of concerns with whether or not this drone company will stay around. Is this licensed DJI technology? Is this DJI making another company? There is a lot of questions here, but this is a company that is out of Malaysia, supposedly. So I think that is something to also consider is this may be a little bit more accessible. Again, I do have concerns with a new company coming on board and trying to sell drones, especially with the batteries being price locked. You don't have a lot of external support. So just keep in mind when you are making that purchasing decision, it might be something to consider waiting a little bit and also looking at what we currently have as past examples. Um, Specta came and went out of business rather quickly. I, th I think within about six months of them launching their two drone products, they were not able to provide batteries anymore. And by having the batteries firmware locked, there was a lot of complaints and issues and people are basically now stuck with drones that only have one battery, and that is all they can get, especially when you're paying this much for a drone. That is something to consider. I guess the big question is, it depends a lot on the geopolitical situation and how that might change going forward. 